everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about March. Very late, yes, but we are still gonna talk about it because a lot of things still happened. And even though I'm a little bit behind schedule, we keep pushing on. If you're new to my little coffee chat wrap up videos, this is just where I tell you about my month, all of the bookish and authorly things that I did, all of the reading and all of the fun little life things. And we just kind of chat. You tell me about your month and I tell you about mine. So March, how was everyone's March? Was it super long for you guys the way it was for me? I actually have quite a few writing things to chat about this month. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in. But don't forget to let me know how your month went, some of the amazing books you read, the writing accomplishments that you just smashed. Let me know all of that down in the comments. Starting right off with some writing stuff. The first cool thing that happened was I actually got my royalty statement in for, let's see, it was July through December of last year. At least in my experience, it seems like you get your royalty statements like six months behind and nothing really shocking to report. It covers the first three months that the odds was out, which was fun to see, but to no one's surprise, the odds did not sell as much as The Glass Witch did. It's pretty typical for your second book not to sell as much as your first book. And on top of that, this was like a two book deal. So like it's, the publishers always push your first book more than your second book. <laughs> In general, I think that the odds sold about 5% in the first three months that The Glass Witch did, which is kind of wild, kind of wild, but not unsurprising. I do wish there was more of a push because I think The Odds is my superior book in a lot of ways. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's my next level up in a lot of ways. And um, I think it is fun and kooky. And it's just, I don't know, kind of like deeply me. I wish that it was able to, more readers were able to find it. But um, that's just how publishing works. And I mean, hey, it's still selling. Like 5% of what The Glass Witch did is still fine. I'm still happy with it. And The Glass Witch is still selling too. Like not a ton, not anything to like write home about, but people are still finding her, which is like amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm still doing well in the fairs, which is blowing my mind because kids are choosing to pick up my like $17 hardcover versus, you know, when they could buy probably two or three paperbacks and they're just like, going for my book instead. Like that makes me so happy and like I'd be shocked. But something about the class which must be appealing to the children because they're still going for it. And my gosh, that's exciting. Hopefully this year we get the glass switch paperback in the fair so it can sell even more. That's what I'm hoping because it'll be cheaper so the kids will be able to buy it easier. The next big writing thing was that I went on a writing retreat to New Orleans with a whole bunch of author tube buddies and their partners. I did a whole vlog on that, which you can check out. I'll link it down below. But uh, yeah, we wrote during the day and we explored at night. We went to like a vampire speakeasy, like voodoo shops. We went on a swamp tour, a jazz cruise. Like there was so much fun activities on this trip. And it was great to catch up with everyone, you know, that you only get to see like once a year or so. Now let's talk specifically about the projects that I worked on this month. So my main project right now is Bitter Bones. This is my middle grade horror novel that I am writing. It deals with uh, creepy dolls and crappy parents and kind of like exploring disability through body horror. It's a fun time. Every time I tell someone in my real life, like they're like, what are you writing now? And I tell them they're like, oh, <laughs> it's weird, but I'm, I'm having a good time. And I guess that's what matters. But I'm working on this book very, very slowly. I mentioned in a vlog a few weeks ago about how I was trying to like relearn to be an author, re getting in the mindset of writing every day for multiple hours a day. In February, I was really busy with a lot of other author projects and uh, that really ate into my writing time. So I just got out of the practice of writing a lot <laughs> during the day. And that's been something I'm still struggling with. Like we're halfway through April and I'm still just like really working to find that author writing and author administration stuff balance. My happy place is writing like four hours a day and then admin the other part of my working day. I'm getting about half of that honestly right now. So we're gonna keep working on it <laughs> and we're gonna get back up to where we normally are. It's just like a very slow thing because uh, yeah, my body's like, why? Why do we have to do this? We didn't have to do this last week. The other project that I worked on this month is something that I am calling Crimson Girls. This is a YA gothic horror that's kind of like Crimson Peak meets Count of Monte Cristo, but like make it gay. <laughs> and I've been fiddle farting around with this book. Uh, nothing serious, just kind of like, you know, getting it in my brain. I wanna work on it during NaNoWriMo this year. And so I'm just like in the wheels turning. And I had an idea for an opening and it was like, 
really boring and I was like, Ugh. like if I picked up a book and it started like this, like I don't even know if I would get through the first chapter. Uh, but it's all I had for now and I hadn't spent a lot of time brainstorming. And at the same time, one of my critique partners was like, hey, I'm struggling with my opening too. Why don't we have a call where we can do some exercises and try to like weasel out better openings? And I was like, sure. Well, that call went so well for me because I now have such a fun, exciting, creepy, horror opening that I am just like so excited for because now I'm like if I read a book with this kind of opening I would just be like oh I can't wait to turn the page to start chapter two <laughs> basically what happened was I just was going with the first idea in my mind of an opener and I was like oh I guess that's the opener and then we'll make it more interesting later but we did this writing exercise where we really tried to think of different openers for the story and what happened was I took that original idea and I just kind of like branched off of it and I followed that branch and then I went back to the original and then followed a different branch and like doing that so many times you really find a good story and you start thinking outside the box and it worked really well for me and now I'm very excited to draft that in November. And my last project that I worked on is my funsy just for fun <laughs> no one's ever gonna read it because embarrassing novel. I spoke in my last month's coffee chat about how I just wanted a stress-free novel that I didn't have to worry about like how it was gonna be marketed, how it was gonna read to others. I didn't have to care if it was like cliche or overdone. I just wanted something for fun to fill around with when I needed to refill the well. And for me, that is this like epic Stardust ripoff story. <laughs> I actually don't even know if the story will really ever be written or if it'll be just something that I piddle around with in the world building characterization stage because <laughs> In the month of March, I wrote 12 pages, single spaced, of a dragon encyclopedia for this world. Didn't even work on the characters or the plot or anything else, just a straight up dragon encyclopedia. And it was on one dragon in the encyclopedia. And in this world, there's probably like 20 different breeds of dragons. So I am just living my best life. Next, let's dive into talking about some books that I read in the month of March. In March, I read 10 books. I also participated in two readathons. So the first one is the TBR Takedown-a-thon that's hosted by Jessica Williamson, where you just get like a bingo board full of prompts uh, to read down your TBR. I did pretty good if I do say so myself. Also, it was helped by me doing my own personal <laughs> readathon. Uh, no one else was involved. It was just me and my notebook. We were the only ones that knew about it. But it is something that I called genrethon. And the idea for this was that my Goodreads TBR is like my huge exhaustive TBR, right? To be read pile. This is where every book that I'm interested in reading ever is on there. Right now I'm around like 200 or so books and I work really hard to make sure I'm reading the books off of that list. I also have a Google Sheets doc where I take all of those books on the Goodreads TBR and I separate them out into age categories and genres so I just kind of know like oh I'm in the mood for a middle grade sci-fi let me see what I have on my Goodreads TBR and I can kind of sort it that way easier. What tends to happen though is that certain genres and age categories get a little bit more full a little bit more congested than others and sometimes when I'm not in the mood to read those types of books for a few months on end but I'm still seeing books and uh, seeing new announcements for books that are in that genre and I'm like oh yeah when I'm in the mood I do want to read that sometimes they get like a lot <laughs> like I get a lot of books in one age category or genre and I'm like oh. my idea for a genre -thon was that I would choose one or two of those really congested age categories and genres and for a whole month try to read as many of those books as I can my soft goal for this project was to get each of the categories and genres Genres that I choose down by half. My heaviest genres were middle grade fantasy, young adult fantasy, and adult thriller. I kind of treated this as a try the first couple chapters tag that you see some booktubers doing where they just grab a bunch of books that they're not sure if they want to continue with and read until they find out if it's something they do like or if it's something that they're just gonna put to the side, unhaul, whatever. And that worked really well for me because in the month of March I was able to actually take 20 books off of my TBR, 10 that I read to completion, and 10 10 that I got a few chapters in and I was like, you know, I just don't think this is for me. Clean it off the list. And that felt so good. And I did find a couple standouts from that experiment that I want to share with you guys. First of all, I also have to talk about uh, Tender Beast. This is by my friend LaSalle Samberry. She went on the writer retreat with me. I just have to give it a shout out because I did reread the final this month. But like, if you have not read this, you really should. It's a really great horror thriller novel. Mm. 
pick it up. <laughs> but in new books, one of the wins that I got from my YA fantasy category was Six Crimson Cranes. If I remember correctly, this is like an amalgamation of a bunch of Eastern Asian uh, myths and folklores kind of woven together about a princess whose stepmother puts a curse on her brothers and turns them all into cranes. And she has to kind of like go on this adventure to change them back. It's kind of an epic quest adventure novel if you like those the way that I do this might be for you but it has like a different tinge to it because it is like East Asian inspired so you're not getting like ye old man fantasy vibes this was so fun because it was so different and it took from stories that I wasn't familiar with so at no point did I know where the story was going to go and it didn't seem to follow like a typical western story structure pattern and because of that it was unpredictable and because of that it was so much more fun to read it feels very true to YA it doesn't it feel like adult books that like and don't get me wrong I do like the adult books that kind of like clandestinely or like oh I'm I'm YA but really I'm adult you know what I mean like it doesn't feel like that it just feels like this was really written for teenagers and I while I can appreciate both types of YA like this is just pure it's wholesome it's beautiful the romance is so sweet Oh my gosh, so sweet. And it's also got a good amount of political intrigue. So I highly recommend this if any of that sounds in your wheelhouse. My next one came from my adult thriller category and that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. And guess what you guys? It's my first five star of the year. I finally got a five star. I'm so happy. I'm so picky. Sometimes I wish I wasn't so hard to please with books, but apparently I'm just a big meanie head and uh, I'm, I'm really stingy with my five stars, but I finally found one and I'm so happy. I loved this so much to be completely honest like i'm gonna pitch this book to you and you'll be like okay i've heard that a million times it's about a group of college friends who something happened when they were in college and now 10 years later they're coming back for a reunion and things are going to be rehashed that sounds like every book that you probably already have read however this one was just so good for me because it was like perfectly to my taste i love messy friendships messy relationships it's one of my favorite things to explore i love unlikable characters who are messy 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 like so like bad people i like bad people having bad relationships with their bad friends it's one of my favorite things to read in books i think it's because i've been blessed by having a really drama free life so there's nothing going on in my life so i love reading about people who have everything going on in their life you know what i mean love the drama i loved how terrible the main character was how like just like deeply like the way she thinks about herself is so wrong and like you just want to slap her and be like girl but it was it was fun because of the way she acts she makes messy circumstances and it makes other messy people People react messily and uh, I just yeah I really really liked this one five stars baby and now let's quickly talk about some life stuff I don't actually have that much to talk about uh, in this section because most of my life was the writing stuff and trying to get my writing life together but there was a situation where my computer died and I couldn't write for a week. And in that week, I discovered this thing, this thing that literally no one's heard about. And I got obsessed and it's called Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I got obsessed. I got absolutely obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons. I just thought it was like a board game. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. It's something I'd be into, it's fantasy. But I knew that there were like a lot of rules. So I was just intimidated. And then I didn't have my computer for a week. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna learn something kind of intensive, like why not do it when I can't work for a week? And, and I did and I am obsessed. It's basically writing, it's collaborative storytelling. And I didn't know that. If I had known that, I would have been obsessed with it so much quicker. There are so many tools that people who play Dungeons and Dragons use to create their characters and create their stories and create their roles that writers do as well. Like there's so much overlap and I had no idea. And I went into a hardcore because it's just basically world and character building. And uh, you know, it's in a ye old fantasy world. It's in an old white man fantasy world. So like, you don't have to worry about your, your tropes, your cliches, you just have a good time. And I think I've showed this before, but I, I my, made a little character. She's a grandma and garden gnome. <laughs> she's, she's a forest gnome and she's a little ranger and she just wants to go out on adventures because she didn't get to when she was younger because she was busy taking care of her apiary and all of her grandkids and, and tending to her farm. And then all of a sudden she's like, I'm like 400 years old and I never went on my adventure. Gosh darn it. 
I better get started. And so that's that's who she is. I also made an aesthetic, which I think is pretty dope. So I'm gonna show you that too. But because of that, I also started watching Critical Role. I started watching Campaign 2, which is where everyone says to start if you wanna like, you know, learn about Dungeons and Dragons, just kind of get the vibes for it. Yeah, I'm like 22 episodes in and I, I love it. I love watching these like professional voice actors play out these characters because it, it feels like I'm listening to an audiobook. And truly that's what it is. If Dungeons and Dragons is collaborative storytelling, then listening to people play, especially professional voice actors play, is in fact consuming an audiobook. Okay, and very last thing, kind of rolling off of the whole dragon thing. You guys know I'm in my 3D printed dragon era and I got my last two dragons in. And no more, no more. I'm on like a toy buying band. Like no more Squishmallows right now, no more 3D printed dragons. Like you gotta get your life together, Lens. <laughs> but I wanna show you this little fella does not have a name yet so if you'd like to drop a themed name in the comments i would really appreciate it but this is a little tiny easter bunny dragon look at the ears oh my gosh and look at how tiny it is and like there's little easter eggs going all the way down at the little back it's the tiniest little guy that i have so this was the little freebie that came with my order and then this is the the king the king pin of all the king pins okay everyone meet eviscerous and he's a fall autumnal dragon. See the acorn on him? The colors are stunning. The leaves, the acorns everywhere. He is just all that in a bag of chips. So let me know down in the comments what you wrote in the month of March. If you read any good books, if anything fun happened in your life, if you got obsessed with anything, if you got something new for your collection, let me know. Me, Eviscerous, and then Baby Bunny Dragon. Would love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being patient with my uploading schedule. I really appreciate you guys for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.